good afternoon all of you so good afternoon and welcome to all my dear students so as you all know this year we have gone for british council activities right and one of the major activities that you people are doing the 7th and 8th graders is bird conservation what is that Bird yeah. Till now, you have already presented many PowerPoint presentations to us. You have presented chart presentations and many things. So, but before we really get into the core of the activities, we need to get an introduction into the activity, right? Right. Do you all love birds? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Can you name these birds? So, what is this? Spider. That's right. And this is. Mechanical. Okay. So, what about this? Do you like watching birds? Yeah, yes, have you seen them sitting on the electric poles and everywhere? Yes, yeah, yes, if you have go gone to visit a garden or a forest or any such place, wildlife sanctuary or something, have you noticed the birds? Yes, yeah, yes, how beautiful the birds are, isn't that so? Yes, yeah, yes, early in the morning, if you wake up, you hear the chirping of the birds. Yes, yeah, yes, that sound is so soothing to our soul, right? So, we all love birds in many ways, uh, but we should also know that uh, today we are actually facing a crisis. The crisis is that of bird endangerment. What is that crisis? Bird, bird endangerment. Okay. So this is why we have taken up this activity called bird conservation. And we'll be doing many activities in this regard. And our intention is to spread an awareness about how to protect the birds in the society. And we want to increase the number of the birds and make the world more vibrant. Got it? So birds, add, birds not just add a beauty to the world, they have many other purposes as well. Right? So each and every organism in the ecological chain has some purpose, has some duty to perform. So if you remove that, the chain will be broken. Eventually, the whole system will be uh, into shatters. Got it? So we realize that birds are very, very important creatures. So not just we are doing any service to them, but it is for our sake. It's also for the sake of the human beings that we should be preserving birds. Right? So let us get into it and let's see some uh, learning outcomes of this particular uh, presentation that we have today. So, let's start off with the bird conservation. So, uh, once we start this, our, as I told you, our activity name is the conservation of birds. So, uh, let us see the learning outcomes. First, we'll know about the famous Indian ornithologist Salim Ali. There is no one else like him. There are many others who have followed him, follows his footsteps. But he remains to be the stellar Indian ornithologist. Next, we have to identify the different features of birds. We'll just, uh, we'll not go into too much of depth. We'll just give you an intro. After that, you will do a lot of research activity based on that. So after that, we'll understand some of the major little bit of characteristics of the birds. Then we'll know about the importance of birds for humans and also for the environment. As we said, we are protecting birds not for the sake of only birds. It's also for the sake of the whole environment, per se. So we know about uh, um, the things that we can do to attract birds to our vicinity. Nowadays, we find a lot of birds missing in our locality, right? So we want more of them, more of those visitors. So let us see what we can do about that. Let's get started, yes? So as we said, Salim Ali. So Salim Ali was an Indian ornithologist. He was so very popular. His work is so very important that we call him the bird man of India. So Salim Ali was born on the 12th November 1896. So he, uh, right from his childhood, actually, he lost his parents during his childhood. But as he grew up, his interest in birds continued to be, right? He was raised by his uncle called Amiruddin Tayyabji. Later on, he grew up, as he grew up, he was more and more fascinated with the birds. He wanted to know more about where the birds come from and where do they stay, what do they eat, how do they nest, what are their breeding patterns, all these things. He was having a lot of interest in that, right from his childhood. So initially, uh, he worked as a guide and later on as a clerk in a museum. Okay, so he was working there, but uh, that was only one part of his work. But, but his interest majorly lied in the research about the birds. So he was doing a lot of research about the weaver bird. Weaver bird interests him a lot. So a weaver bird is a very uh, nice bird. It creates wonderful uh, uh, nest. Okay, that itself is like we will not be able to understand that how come a bird with uh, only the beak as its major uh, uh, instrument, how has it prepared such a kind of a nice bird? It's even difficult with, our, with us people making it with the hands, right? So he was a lot interested in the weaver bird. Later on, all his findings and the research work that he has done in this regard has earned him a lot of name and fame in the field of ornithology. Okay, so his research work, his papers are a lot of a great treasure for all the people who want to know about the birds. Now let us see. So Salim Ali has written a lot of books. In that, uh, the Book of Indian Birds is one of the most important birds uh, uh, books that he has written. Later on, a book of uh, birds of India and Pakistan. At that time, when he was born, India and Pakistan were one. 
Okay, the partition still did not happen. So he had did a lot of research, not just on the birds of India, but also that of Pakistan. So regional birds, field guides like the common birds, all these are the birds, I mean, uh, the books that he has written. Other than that, his autobiography, which is called The Fall of the Sparrow, makes an important read for the avian lovers. Avian means related to birds. Okay, so we all are in, in a way lovers, but maybe we don't actually go into that much of depth. So people who really want to know about the birds very well must definitely read the autobiography called The Fall of the Sparrow. Okay, because of his uh, so much of contribution towards the society and in the field of uh, uh, bird research, he was given a lot of honors by the Indian government. As you can see, he was given civilian honors like Padma Bhushan, Padma, Sh Padma Vibhushan. Right? So they are, they are like very, very high honors when it comes to citizens gaining uh, honored by the constitution or the government. Then he was also nominated to the Rajya Sabha. So people who do, do some distinct work in a particular field are elected to the Rajya Sabha. So you can see many kind of people in the Rajya Sabha. In Lok Sabha, you see most of politicians. But in the Rajya Sabha, you can see people belonging to different fields. So he was the one who was also selected to the Rajya Sabha. Later on, uh, in his 100th anniversary, the government also published uh, two postage stamps to honor his legacy. Got it? So let's check out Nana. Next one. So birds are avian friends. As I told you before, avian is something to do with the birds. So birds are definitely our friends. We always, at uh, every point of time, definitely everybody must have thought that the birds have got this uh, special ability to fly. Did you ever feel like flying? Yeah, so human beings are in, in a way, they, they are a little bit uh, handicapped when it comes to we cannot fly, right? So we can only use mechanisms like uh, aeroplanes or things like that, helicopters, which, which you can use for flying. But we have not got the power of flight. But yes, birds are blessed with that power of flight. So let's check out what is it that makes the bird fly? Why can't we fly? How come the birds are flying? So what is it, the difference in which they are made, which is helping them in the flight? Let's check out birds have wings. Which, which are helping them to make them fly. Other than that, they have very light and hollow bones. So something which is light and hollow, it tends to float, right? Even if you put it on water, it will be floating. So their bodies are so light, even if they look big, their bones are all hollow. Okay, hollow means you understand, right? So there are spaces in between, not like closely packed up. So because of that, they get that additional advantage because of which they are able to fly. So they do not have teeth and instead of it, you know, birds have different sort of beaks. Right? So, which are used to tear, bite, chisel, crunch, chew, all these things they do with them. Like we use our teeth, the birds use their beaks. So, birds have streamlined bodies which help them to fly. So, the shape of the birds are like very streamlined. Means what? It starts like elongated and it comes ends it. So, that makes it like a frictionless sort of a journey within the air. That's called a streamlined body. You must have seen the bird's body resemble that of aeroplanes. Have you seen? Yeah. So that body has got the minimum resistance of the air because of which they are able to fly. Got it? So that's why they've got that additional benefit and we naturally are not streamlined. We don't have the streamlined bodies. Now let us look at some of the basic characteristics. Many of you know it already. So some birds are carnivorous, very few are herbivores and uh, many of them are omnivores. Right? Many of the birds that we see uh, locally are omnivores. They eat both meat and they also eat uh, uh, the plant or the vegetable matter. Whereas some are carnivores completely, they don't eat any vegetable matter at all, they only depend upon flesh and meat. And some of them are herbivores very rarely. Adult birds find food for their babies. So as I say, have you seen an adult bird feeding a baby? Yeah, have you seen those pictures? So they carry food from very long and they straight away put them into the mouths of the little babies. So they would be keeping their mouths wide open and the mother would keep on feeding all the babies. So till the time the babies really grow up to an extent, the mothers help them in a big way. Okay, so we had earlier talked about the importance of the, of the birds. Not that because they are important, we should preserve them. We should also know, understand that birds are species and they have every right. Like human beings have got a right to stay, survive on the planet. Similarly, all the other planets, also all the other animals also have. Let us see that what is the work that a bird does in the environment. So birds that eat other animals or predators, they have an important role in the food chain. You must have seen that birds actually eat up many rodents. You know what are rodents? like the mice okay so what do they do if the birds are not there imagine then the small worms and the rodents they would end up destroying the crops and many of the plants right so th we should be very thankful to the birds that they are eating up these creatures and making this planet a livable place for the human beings 
Next, they keep the rodents under control, helping farmers. So we already said that birds help in stop spread of some of the diseases because the birds usually tend to eat up many small worms and many insects and flies and things like that. They also prevent uh, diseases. Yes or no? Otherwise, these flies and all, they are a cause of many diseases in the world. So because of the birds eating them up, that way also they help us. Next is bird spread pollen and uh, the seed. Bird spread pollen and uh, the seed to help with the reproduction of the plants. Do you know how the plants reproduce? Right? So they release the pollen, the pollen goes from place to place to far off places the pollen is carried. There are new plant emerges. Right? So birds, because of these, uh, sit on the birds to take the nectar. In the due course of time, they would stick a lot of pollen on their body. So they would go on depositing in different places that they visit. So that is how the birds help in the expansion of a particular species of plants as well. Right? So this is a very great role that the birds do. We should be really thankful to them. So as we said, see, uh, endangered birds is a really, uh, birds getting endangered is a real cause for concern. Means what nowadays many birds are getting extinct. There are many reasons for that and many times there are also human reasons. Okay, some are natural because every species after some time they tend to get extinct, new uh, species emerge. That is a natural process. But other than that, there is a lot of human intervention. That means what? Because of the activities of the human beings, many birds are getting extinct as well. So all of you see here, nearly 1,313 species of the birds are in the verge of extinction. Okay, anytime they can go extinct. So this number is nearly 13% of the total bird population. So how much are we left with now? If 13% goes away, how much are we left with now? Yes, so that 87% will be the remaining in case all these birds go extinct. So we have to make all the efforts to make sure that the birds stay and they don't go extinct. So we have to adopt many different types of policies and methods. Okay, certain things say, government actually does uh, establishes bird sanctuary, preservatories where the birds are preserved. Okay, it, they are doing their part. But actually the most of the damage is done by the common human beings. So we also can contribute in preserving the birds. In which way? If you see, make the windows safer. See, uh, many times these days, because of the innovation, we are preparing such kind of window seals which are completely transparent. Got it? Because of which the birds do not understand that there is a window seal in between. If they tend to rush and they hit against the window seals and they fall down. They fall dead. Got it? So we must make sure that whenever we are putting window seals, they are bird safe. They don't end up killing the birds. Next is we have to keep cat indoors. Cats are one of the most danger for smaller birds basically. So we must make sure that if you are keeping, you are petting cats, you must keep the cats indoors. Next is use native plants. Why do we say this? Because native plants use less of chemical fertilizers. They grow very easily. They bear nutritious fruit. Along with that, they also use very less of fertilizers. So because of which, if you grow more of native fertilizers, native plants, then you can end up uh, giving a healthy environment for the birds. Okay? You will not uh, subject them to too much of chemicals. Avoid pesticides. This is exactly what we are saying. Pesticides can be very, very dangerous to birds. Can you say how? Because, yes, because chem pesticides, when the fruits are put a lot of pesticides over it and the birds unknowingly eat them, they end up consuming poison. We, human beings, we tend to wash the fruit and vegetable, but the birds don't do that, right? They, they directly consume all the uh, seed and the fruit, because of which they end up dying. So we should make sure that we don't use too much of uh, indiscriminate usage of uh, chemical fertilizers should be stopping. Okay, we should use them to the minimum. Next, shade-grown coffee. Shade-grown coffee is, coffee is one of the favorite drinks of human beings, right? So if you grow shade-grown coffee, this is more healthier for the planets, uh, birds because, because that uses very less amount of chemical fertilizers, okay? If you uh, generally, what we drink, we, grow, we drink the sun-grown coffee because of which on that sun-grown coffee, you have to put a lot of fertilizers to grow the crop. But if you drink more of shade-grown coffee, then that will be helpful both for the human beings as well as for the birds. Okay, so we should prefer, better prefer that. Plastics are also very serious cause of concern because when the food is minutely mixed up with the plastic, the bird cannot recognize it, it directly eats away. That poison again goes into the bird's body. It turns toxic and ends up killing the bird, right? So like this, do citizen science. We should also make sure that which birds are staying where and which are the steps that we should take to conserve those birds. So these are the various small measures in which we also can do our uh, part in preserving the birds around us. Save birds, save environment.
So as we come to the end of this presentation, one thing that we can do, we all love birds, right? Initially we said. So if we love birds, what, we, what do we want to do? We would want to have more birds staying around us in, the, in our vicinity. Vicinity means the place which is there nearby us. So what are the things that you can do? You can set up a bird bath on your terraces or the windows. Or somewhere if you put up this bird bath, they would have fun. Right, the birds would have fun. They would just uh, splash around the water, and they would they would drink water. In summers, that will be a great service that you will do to the birds. Right, so you can set up a bird bath, then plant fruits and bearing trees and flowers. So if you uh, plant many fruit and flower bearing trees, naturally the birds would be attracted. Next is leave the litter, leaf litter to rot. This is something very interesting. See, what do we tend to do? You uh, you clean away all the leaf litter. Yeah, you want to make the garden fresh and in the meantime you clean away all the leaf litter. But we fail to realize that leaf litter is a very important source of fertilizer. Okay, it also enriches the soil at the same time under the leaf litter a lot of worms would grow. Okay, that worms are a great food for the birds, our dear friends. Okay, so you must make sure that if it is not like too problematic for you, let the leaf litter rot. Next, place a log in your garden. You must have seen if you put the logs, the birds tend to come and sit on them and they have fun. Next is provide a temporary shelter. So we will be taking up many such activities. We will prepare certain shelters like bird houses and those bird feeders. We are going to prepare. We are going to have all these activities as a part of our British Council program. So these are certain things which will also help the birds. Right? Many people already have done this and they have seen very successful results of this happening. So we can also do our part to bring our friends closer to us and nearer to us. So what do we do then? So birds add beauty and color to the world. So we've seen that in the end, so how birds are so very important. They're not just helping in the ecological science, ecological balance, but they also add that beauty and color to the environment. So let us make sure that we conserve the birds. We have this awareness. And now that you are aware, you would spread the awareness to the other people. Got it? So let us have, let us make sure and resolve that we will be conserving birds. Thank you, dear children.